Okay, the final sort of trigonometry questions we want to do are in equations, and these are actually the hardest ones. Okay, so I want to go through one really long example, and uh, if you can if you can follow this example, if you can do these sorts of questions, then you're in a really good position to understand the course. Okay, so the first thing to do is if you have a question like this one, sine two two theta minus pi on six greater than or equal to a half. What you do is you firstly simplify it by making a substitution. Let x equals 2 theta minus pi on 6. Okay, so therefore what we're really trying to solve is sine x is greater than or equal to a half. And just like in previous questions, when you make that substitution, you have to change the range for the new variable. So when theta equals 0, x will be minus pi on 6. And when theta equals 2 pi, x will be 2 times 2 pi minus pi on 6, which is 4 pi minus pi on 6, which is 24 pi on 6 minus pi on 6, which is 23 pi on 6. So let's put that one up there. Okay. And let's even though it's good to show you working, because of the technological limitations, I'll get rid of that so we've got space. So sine x is greater than or equal to a half x is an element of that domain, that range. Okay. Just like in other questions, you now need to solve this for x. So you get your basic angle, which is pi on six. Your solutions, if sine is positive, are in quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. So therefore your solutions for x are pi on 6 and pi minus pi on 6, which is 5 pi on 6. And now we need to add and subtract 2 pi to these solutions. So if we add 2 pi, we get 13 pi on 6. If we add 2 pi to this, we get 17 pi on 6. If we add 2 pi to this, we get 25 pi on 6. Now clearly that's just outside the range. So we don't want 25 pi on 6. Okay, so we want pi on 6 and 5 pi on 6 for our first two solutions. 13 pi on 6, 17 pi on 6, that's all we need there. And we should go back the other direction as well. So 5 pi on 6 minus 2 pi is minus 7 pi on 6. Do we want that solution? No, that's outside. So in other words, we've got our four solutions here. x equals pi on 6 5 pi on 6, 13, oops, let me rewrite that, 13 pi on 6, and 17 pi on 6. Okay, this is a long question, and we now need to think about what these answers are on a graph. Okay, so coming back, let's jump over to the next page. Um, and bring our solutions with us. Now, let's draw a graph to try and picture what we have here. So remember that was y equals sine x that we're drawing for x between minus pi on 6 and 23 pi on 6. Okay. You must draw a graph for inequalities. So let's do it. Here's our graph. Here's x. Here's y equals sine x. What does this graph look like? Well, it's just the ordinary sine x graph. It goes between 0 and 2 pi. Now, if we need to get up to 23 pi on, if we need to get up to 23 pi on 6, then 
that's almost 4 pi. So it's basically up and down again, and it stops just short of 4 pi. So that's 23 pi from 6. That's, of course, 3 pi. Now, we need to go back to minus pi on 6. We need to just go a little bit out the back there. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do then is to interpret what our answers are on the graph. If sine x was equal to a half, then what we're going to have is four solutions. And these four solutions are pi on 6. So let's move, move that because that's in our way. And that's going to be in our way. And that's going to be in our way. Let's repair the graph a little bit. So we've killed it. Okay, so our solutions are pi on 6, 5 pi on 6, 13 pi on 6, and 17 pi on 6. Okay, now the question that we're trying to solve is sine x is bigger than, so let's go back and have a look, sine x is bigger than or equal to a half. Okay, these are all the points where sine x is equal to a half. So bigger than or equal to a half will be every part of the graph from here to here and from here to here. Okay. So the question is, what are the x values over which the graph is bigger than a half, bigger than or equal to a half, and those x values are, looking at the graph above, from pi on 6 to 5 pi on 6, as well as, or, or 13 pi on 6 to 17 pi on 6. Okay. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Those x values correspond to that part of the graph, and those x values correspond to that part of the graph. Okay, and finally, the last step is we need to now transfer these x values back into theta values. So if we look back at the previous page, remember that x was equal to 2 theta minus pi on 6. So let's jump ahead a little bit. Oops. Let's, let's jump ahead a little bit. x was equal to 2 theta minus pi on 6. And the x values that we had were... Um, let's chuck them down there, with those x values there. So let's remove x and make that 2 theta minus pi on 6. So therefore adding pi on 6 to everything, we get 2 theta equals 2 pi on 6, 6 pi on 6, 13 pi on 6, and, oh sorry, Everybody makes mistakes. 14 pi on 6, 18 pi on 6, and so therefore theta will equal 1 pi on 6, 3 pi on 6, which is pi on 2, 7 pi on 6, and 9 pi on 6, which is 3 pi on 2. Okay, and now using those values, we can finally write here, let's jump backwards and forwards, pi on 6 and pi on 2. Union 7 pi on 6, 3 pi on 2. And that's your final answer. Okay? So these questions are long.
they take a long time to work through and they're hard to do um, but like I say once you're able to do these questions then you really have understood the trigonometry chapter okay and just to reiterate that the graph is really really important if you're not doing the graph then you can't do these questions okay